We start by searching for the VirtualBox download page. The original site, virtualbox.org, is going to come up first in the results most likely. You can go ahead and use that site. There's nothing wrong with downloading the software from there. Oracle does have a newer site that they've brought up at www.oracle.com. Seems to be a little bit easier to use because it has the downloads more clearly laid out and at least for Windows anyway, the Windows installer includes the guest editions and the installer itself. Since we're doing a demo for Windows, we're going to select the Windows installer. It's uh, between 100 and 200 megabytes to download, depending on your internet speeds, it may take a minute or two to download this. Once you get it downloaded, you're going to go to your downloads directory, wherever that is, and in there you'll find the installer, which is an executable file. Since I've downloaded a couple times, you see a couple downloads here. The installer needs administrator privileges, so when you double click on it to do the installation, Windows is going to pop up a dialog asking for elevated permissions. If you're not an administrator, you may have trouble with this step. We're going to select yes to grant the permissions, and then the installer dialog is going to come up. We're going to click next. We're presented with the different features that can be installed. It's perfectly fine to just accept the default and install everything. Note that the VirtualBox Python support does require Python to be installed, and we'll get a warning about that since we're leaving that feature enabled. It's not going to be a problem, just something to note. We click Next, and it warns us that it's going to temporarily turn off the network interface. This will disrupt any kind of downloads you have going on. So we hit Yes on that. And now the dialog tells us that we have the missing Python dependencies. Just select Yes. It's not a problem. And finally, we're going to click Install to start the installation process. It will give us a dialog telling us how the installation is going. Mostly depending on disk speed, this can take a little while to do the installation. Once the installation finishes, you can start VirtualBox right away by leaving the box checked. You can also start it from your Windows menu, and you can pin the shortcut to your desktop. You can pin it to your taskbar as well for convenience. So we click Finish, and it's going to go ahead and start the VirtualBox program and bring that up. At this point, you can go ahead and start importing your OVA files or otherwise installing your guest operating systems onto VirtualBox.